Hi everybody, we have a birth announcement video for you today for these mini Australian Labradoodles from our Olay litter. Hi, I'm Claire from Van Isle Labradoodles and this is Noisette and Eli's litter of mini Australian Labradoodles. In today's video, we are going to introduce you to each of the puppies, tell you a little bit about them, what their colors and patterns are, their gender, uh, tell you their birth weights. We're going to give you a little bit of an update on Mama Labradoodle Noisette and how she's doing and we're going to tell you the story of the delivery of this litter. So we're going to start with the story of the delivery because that really is the big story for this litter. Now one of the things we told everybody on the reservation list for these Labradoodle puppies was it's going to be a surprise as to what color the puppies are because we're going to be expecting a rainbow litter. We were expecting that we could have every color and every pattern available in this litter. And as you can see we do have pretty much every single color in the rainbow here. But the big surprise was Noisette decided she would have these puppies on her own to start out with. So these puppies were born on May the 2nd, just about 24 hours ago. They're not even a full 24 hours old yet. Uh, and overnight, Noisette was on the bed with us. And she was a little bit up and down a few times. She did a little bit of scratching on the bed, but she wasn't panting or showing us any of the typical signs of first stage labor. So we weren't at all concerned about her giving birth imminently. That was um, in the overnight of May 1st to May the 2nd. The puppies were born on May the 2nd. Noisette's due date was May the 4th. So we thought mm, she's probably starting to get ready. And we anticipated the puppies likely arriving maybe overnight uh, between May 3rd and May 4th. So that was all fine. We got up for the morning. Uh, we were dealing with the other dogs and the puppies. Noisette came into our doodle den in preparation for breakfast. And uh, we usually leave the dogs in there, the older dogs, to go to the bathroom. And then we come out and we get all of their things ready for their breakfast preparation, which we were doing. And Maisie had had a litter the day before. So I was in taking Maisie out to go to the washroom and I could hear Reynolds yelling, Claire! So I knew something was up and I went running in and here's Noisette. She had found our dig box. Now a dig box is a crate that's broken in half and it's full of scraps from my uh, fabric that I use when I quilt. And so it's really good for mama dogs when they're preparing for their puppy so they can dig everything up. And there's Noisette. She had made a little nest to welcome her little family here. Now you can see they're all thriving. They didn't miss us being there whatsoever. So when we, when we found Noisette, in about 15 minutes she had delivered the first three puppies. So we don't have the exact birth order and we don't have the exact birth time for those first three puppies. So we just decided arbitrarily who the first puppy is, the first, first, second, and third puppies are, and we've given them pretty much um, the, all the same arrival time. But you know, dogs are designed to deliver their puppies on their own. They generally don't need much help from us humans. We're there to provide them with emotional support, and we're there to help if something does go wrong. Obviously, nothing went wrong when Noisette was having her puppies. She just managed everything beautifully and that's really something for a very first time mama labradoodle and was it's just a tiny little woof of a thing she's only 14 pounds and she has six puppies so next door Maisie is around 40 pounds and she has six puppies normally the larger the mama the more puppies you have so six puppies for a little girl like this is amazing especially for her very first litter First litters also tend to have fewer puppies than uh, second and third litters. So now let's tell you a little bit about each of the puppies. So we're guessing the first one born is Red Collar. And Red Collar is the only boy in the litter. And he is this incredibly beautiful black and white party boy. Beautiful markings down his back, really quite something. Lots of beautiful white on his face, a little bit of white on his nose here. 
pretty much symmetrical over his head there. And this little guy we're going to say was born at 9 a.m., just a guess, uh, but we do know that he weighed 240 grams. So he is the biggest puppy in the litter. Right, buddy? Yeah. So the next puppy that we have decided was born, and born maybe just after nine, is Dar Blue Collar, our first girl in the litter. Hey, sweetheart, we we'll just turn her little collar around here. This little girl is a gleaming ebony with some beautiful white on her chest and a little touch of white on her goatee. Okay, if Noazette gets upset when I pick the puppies up, then I will move them over closer to her because the last thing we want to do is to have her stressed or worried about anything. So dark blue collar girl, she weighed 231 grams. And you can see Noisette is just so good and so attentive to her puppies. It's really lovely to see. She's just doing a remarkable job as a mama dog, just really taking to it so well. Some girls take a little while to settle down with their babies. Some girls aren't too sure how to do some things, but Noisette just has it all figured out like she's been doing this for her entire life. And then the third puppy that had arrived that we're saying was number three and maybe arrived around 9.30 or so, maybe 10, is Pink Collar Girl. And I just have to find Pink Collar Girl here. Pink Collar Girl is a chocolate. Here she is, I think, underneath here. Yep, there she is. There we go. So here's Pink Collar Girl. She's a little chocolate girl. Nice little sort of a milky chocolate color. Now you see she has a little bit of junk on her here. This is just from uh, Noisette cleaning her or not having cleaned her yet. This is probably where somebody else has pooped on top of her. But Noisette will look after that in due course. And, and if ever a mom doesn't, then of course we do it for her. But as always, we try to let everything be as natural as possible and for mom to do everything that she's happy doing. So this little girl has no white on her, I don't believe. Nope, and you can see she still has a little bit of her umbilical cord there. You can see that there. It hasn't dried up and fallen off yet. So that's a good girl. The little pink collar girl was 152 grams. So she's the tiniest puppy in the litter. And you can see how small she is. She fits in my hand with no trouble at all. Yeah, so she's just going to be a little whiff of a thing too, just like her mama. Probably going to be very similar in color to Noisette. Noisette looked very much like this when she was an infant. You can see Noisette also has no white on her. She is a chocolate. She has uh, she had a little tiny white patch on her chest initially, but it's uh, disappeared now. So the little pink is going to be very similar to her mom. Next was a yellow collar, and yellow collar is over here. And this little girl is a very pretty caramel party. Now right now when you look at her, this looks like a white dog. These puppies are not always the most beautiful when they're first born because you don't see much other than white. But this will all become evident. And if you watch our, uh, our uh, videos on the Pinot Noir litter, there is a caramel party who's actually an apricot party in um, Dottie's litter who looked very similar to this when she was born. Now her color has come in. She's darkened and she looks quite different. So you can see she has a marking on the top of her head there. She has some over both of her eyes. And when she was born, there was some on her back, which I currently can't see, uh, but I believe those will come back. So she's going to be, uh, she'll look very similar to our girl, Belle. So if you go to our website, vanisledoodles.com, and you go to the Our Dogs section, if you just hover over the dogs, their names come up, and then you can click and see more photos of them. So Belle is the little white puppy. If you look on hers and click through and see her pictures, that's very similar to how this little girl is going to be. And Belle, I can tell you, is stunning. She is one of the prettiest little girls that we have. So Miss Yellow Collar was born at 11.11 and she was 212 grams. So she's a little bit bigger than her sister Pink. And we'll just put her in here. Yeah, there you go, Nozette wants to make sure everything's fine still. Next is Green Collar. And green Collar's just here underneath of yellow. 
here you're gonna lose your spot there green and green is also a girl everybody is a girl as I said except for the first puppy and again we have another chocolate who's going to end up looking very much like mama uh, noisette little bit of white on the goatee there mm, a little tiny bit of white on the chest but otherwise a beautiful chocolate puppy and little green collar was born at 1218 so a little more than an hour after yellow collar and she weighed 205 grams so a little bit smaller than yellow but not much but you can see they're all very small and fit right in the palm of my hand without any trouble at all and you made it a sweet now i talk to the puppies i talk to them all the time none of them can hear me at this point puppies are all born with their ears sealed shut their eyes sealed shut and the inability to eliminate on their own but as you can see when i hold her like this she's on my chest and when I talk she can feel the vibrations and that's what we want we want her to start feeling that knowing what our scent is so we just hold them up close to our necks just for brief periods of time not so that it upsets mom just so they get used to okay that's the person that they understand that we smell different from mama noisette and that whenever they have that uh, scent they associate it with something good and then finally we have purple collar and purple collar is our caramel girl here she is oh she's having a little bit of a chow down so she won't be very happy i'm taking her off and she's a beautiful golden caramel girl this one really pretty she's got that white mark on the top of her head she has some white around her face she has little white toes and We'll just turn her upside down she has some white on her chest here too so she probably has i think the most white markings other than of course yellow and red who are party and purple collar girl didn't get born until 1 30. Um, we actually thought that noisette was all finished with uh, the five puppies uh, and so we had used our doppler and we had palpated her and it felt like no nope, felt like she was pretty much empty we took Noisette outside, she went outside, went to the bathroom. I brought her something to eat and she didn't want to eat, which isn't entirely unusual. Although generally after going through all the work of delivering puppies, mom is hungry, but it's not entirely unusual that they don't eat right away. And so that was fine. We carried on and we started to clean up after uh, the birth and put everything back. And Reynolds happened to be walking by and he came in to see how everybody was doing and thought, oh, Noisette peed in the welcoming box here. Well, no, she didn't. That was just all of the liquid that came because she delivered puppy number six. So she delivered puppy number six on her own as well. Again, flawlessly without any issues, totally not stressed about the whole process just like oh yeah i do this every day so purple collar girl was born at 1 30 we're estimating because uh, that was when we found her and she was still wet she was out of the sack and everything but she still was wet so pretty much brand new and she was 175 grams so that is all the puppies from our olay litter now, Ole, in this case, is the French Ole, not the Spanish Ole. And the reason we called it that was with milk. And that's because Noisette is a beautiful dark coffee color. And Papa Labradoodle Eli is a white color like this. Uh, so it's with milk. And that was why we named that this litter that. And you can see that we have our little milky bits here. And this is all oh, slightly less milky. And then we got some, some uh, little bit of milk in our coffee and then we've got our our black coffee here in in black color and, and then of course in red color who's black and white um, so i guess that's maybe a, a half and half so that is all the puppies um, right now you can see noisette sound asleep she's still catching up she's doing very very well though i mean my goodness you couldn't ask for a better mama dog you'd think that this was her third litter and that she was going to be retiring not that this was her first go at the, the whole process of motherhood she's so calm she's so gentle with her puppies 
Um, some girls, when they first have their puppies, they tend to go around them like this and they don't expose the whole milk bar. Rosette's got that all figured out. Uh, she's just like, I can't believe how well she's doing. She's eating beautifully. Um, for the first 24 hours, we limit the amount the girls eat so that they don't get an upset stomach and diarrhea. Uh, but she is right up to already pretty much her uh, double what she was eating before. She's definitely hungry. She's not, um, she doesn't have a ton of fat on her. She was not the easiest girl to feed during her pregnancy. So we will be fattening her up a little bit now that she's nursing and making sure that she has a really full and rich diet with uh, a good amount of fat and protein in it to, to help her keep healthy and uh, add a little bit of weight onto her here so she's uh, not taxed at all. So if you're one of the families on this litter list, um, you will, of course, enjoy watching this video, I'm sure, and seeing your puppy. You'll also hear from me weekly with different topics that we're going to talk about. Getting your house ready, choosing a vet and a groomer and a trainer, uh, what to do about feeding, how, what is socialization, a myriad of topics that we're going to address and uh, learn together there so you're fully prepared and feel really comfortable when your puppy comes home. This may be your very first dog or it may be you haven't had a puppy for a number of years. And things in the canine world change rapidly. Nutrition and socialization are the two things that have changed more than anything else. But then learning together with your dog is also undergone a dramatic change. We don't even really call it training so much anymore as learning because it's you and your dog learning together and it's establishing a bond, not who's the boss and you will do what I say. Uh, we've learned over the years that that's not effective and that the most important and key thing we do is build that relationship with our puppy earn their trust, earn their respect, and then everybody has, lives happily ever after. So you'll receive a lot of things from me on that. Um, one thing I would caution all of you to, to do is please don't rush out and start buying tons of things for your new puppy. I know that's so tempting to do. Go get a couple of toys, but please hold off on any equipment purchases, anything of any significance, no food. Wait till we've gone through all of that learning together because there's many things on the market that are totally inappropriate many many things that are actually downright unsafe for your your dog uh, so that's all part of the process we're going to go through together so the most fun, fun thing you can do right now is get together with your friends your family and start thinking of a name for your puppy Try to think of something that's really unique. So when you are out with your dog and you're playing and you call, hey, Rover, 16 dogs don't all turn around and look at you. Something that's different that your dog knows that's me and they know that that is just them and that they're not Rover. And speaking of which, I have never met a dog named Rover or Fido yet. <laughs> Uh, but there's many, many common names. If you use Google, you could Google and see what the most common names are and then maybe try to find a variation on one if you like it or something that's a bit different. And if you can do something with two syllables, that's really great so you can shorten it. So Noisette, lots of people call her Noisy or uh, whatever you might come up with as a nickname for, for her name. And then the dog learns when you use their nickname, that's when everything's happy and go, you know, everything's going well. Whereas if you really want their attention, it would be Noisette. And they learn that, oh, if it's my full name, somebody really wants my attention. So it's important that you're able to do that. Now you can have a name like Rain uh, and do something like, oh, Rainy or Rainette or whatever you do. Ripple is only one syllable and she probably has 15 different nicknames. Uh, so it, just think of something that you can use in multiple ways and a name that's really easy for everyone to remember and pronounce, especially if you have children or grandchildren who are gonna be part of your puppy's lives. You want them to be able to easily say the name. So don't pick something like Geronimo, because that's really hard to say if you're three. You'll get a raw, 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 and the dog will have no idea. And you want your puppy to respect your children. That's a really important and fragile bond to build. And so one of the ways you can help do that and set everyone up for success is if you have a name that they can readily say. 
So I hope that gives you some little tips as to how to pick out a great name for your puppy. I hope you enjoyed meeting them all and I hope you join us every week to watch them as they grow over the eight weeks before you take them home. Uh, you will hear from me, as I said, every week, uh, both with a litter update video such as we did today and also with um, a learning topic. We'll also have a question and answer session via Zoom and of course the really fun day when you come for your puppy family visit. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to post them below. I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you may have. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, maybe take a moment to do that so that you don't miss out on any of our litter updates. I always recommend to everybody that you watch all of our litter updates as we try to speak about something different in each litter and give you a little bit of a tidbit of information that's different for every one of them. So this is our six mini Labradoodle puppies from our Olay litter that really should have been called our Great Big Surprise litter, I think. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you again next week.